Matt. Thanks for joining me, man. I do. I want to start off. You brought some stickers. I did. Uh, we edited this out because I had to run all the way back upstairs. But I'm a sticker nut. So I have stickers for you, too. Oh, fantastic. I'm going to start giving these things out. I bought them. So I was doom scrolling on Instagram late night. And uh, you know, shout out. I'll, I'll, I'll rep them. Shout out to uh, Sticky Brand. We're not affiliated, nor do they sponsor me. But they got me with their advertisement. And uh, they got me good because it was like, I think like 15 bucks and you get like a hundred stickers that are vinyl. So I was like, oh, it's pretty dope. So it's not on our website. Let's get in focus. There we go. A little bit of SNE stickers. Uh, so here's a handful, six of them. You have six friends, right? Oh, yeah. Okay. I don't have that many, many. friends. <laughs> I don't have that many friends. But then what do you got here? Uh, these are from my company. Oh, right on. Hold yeah, those up. They're right there. Here, I'll just hand them to you. <laughs> That's uh, our symbol. Just in general, it's just like a face. Oh, I was about to say, is it it's like our O L I O, Olio? O L I O. And then the full I circle get that. all the way yeah. around. So, well, it might be mirrored, right? Possibly. So there's the O L I, and then O. I like it, man. It's trippy. But yes, the geometric the, stuff. Oh, is that you? The same thing happened. Is that to me. you? Yeah. Um, an ad many, many years ago caught my Dude, eye. <laughs> um, so I had some stickers made uh, as a joke, and it picked up way too much steam. And uh, mm. the company that makes our top Here's stickers, he saw it, was like, you know, I could throw that on a hologram, make it real nice for you. So I said, go for it. And Bro. he sent me that, and I was like, print them. <laughs> so, you know, I just kind of hand them out as like a joke. People are like, I've seen you before. I think you're on my water bottle. So. Dude, that's awesome. Yeah. Do you, go around, just, do you go around Denver just like slapping it on signs and stuff? You know, uh, not me so much, but other people do. Jesus. And uh, I've been recognized from the sticker a few times. So I'm like, I didn't put that there. But is this an old company you work for, Sumo? Uh, no. So a Sumo was a, a big seven gram bucket, oh. like a jar of concentrate that we sell oh okay so i was just kind of holding it up like yeah as advertising yeah and then every saint patty's day i wear that jacket so it was just like a random photo that kind of like i said picked up way too much steam <laughs> and kind of became like <laughs> are you the mascot for your company no not in the least okay i would like to be but you know maybe after this podcast man you're gonna make it big they're gonna notice you there it is. Be like, bro, get this guy. A I support my company one hundred percent. I love him. And then, so, so the listeners can see my. Uh, if you, oh, uh, let's see here. There it is. Yeah, there's all my current stickers on my water bottle. I don't stick them on my laptop anymore because I get nervous about them melting. Fair. Uh, and I don't. I don't think laptops get that hot anymore, <laughs> but. Or cover an event that overheats. Yeah, exactly, man. And you never know with these things, man, because it's got like cooling agents in different areas and and, and everything. So uh, I just don't chance it. Fair, in understandable. It's not worth it. But so you work in the marijuana industry. I do. Now. Yep. And have for ten years. Where's your guys' location plant? Like at? Uh, just outside of Denver. Okay. Like right off I seventy. Oh, right on. Yeah. Okay. So, so it's not too far. Yeah, the lovely uh, Denver traffic every morning and every yeah. evening. Yeah, man. It's getting crowded, man. Oh, yeah. Denver's now one hour from Denver. That's I know. Ridiculous. Isn't that nuts? Like the north side to the south side, oh, east, west, terrible. doesn't matter, man. Yep. Yeah. A lot I don't of know how they're going to fix State it. drivers. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. We don't even drive the same. That's no. the crazy part. Like in New Jersey or New York, you drive there and you're like, oh, everyone's driving like a New Yorker. And it's predictable. Here, it's like, are you, where are you from? I see oh, something, California? I see something new every day. Yeah. Like the left lane exit oh, all the, the way across yeah. at the last second. You know, that's yeah. a good one. Yeah, it's a it's dangerous, man. And it's I know we got the light rail, but Jesus dude, that thing does not I've work used that, that in well. the past. Yeah. yeah so. but it just doesn't work that well. No. It's not well, it's reliable. It'll get there in time. But as far as like feasibility of actually using it, it doesn't work out. No. So not a fan. Yeah. So how long you been working for him? And it's at what's the actual? Is it the full name? Olio. Uh, Olio. Yeah. Okay. Just Olio. And how long have they been? In uh, I believe they've been around since 2016. Oh. Okay. Um, and then I started with them in 2020. 
when was pot legalized uh right around 2012 uh, i mean uh, it was okay. i know medical was around before that but that's when the recreational passed on the ballot i believe okay. it was right around when i first moved out here i know it wasn't passed yet yeah but it was on the ballot for i think that maybe next year 2013 yeah dude you've been in it for a minute yeah and just then randomly too just worked at a sandwich shop and they were like how much do you make here i was like nothing and they're like you want to come trim weed for more and i was like absolutely and that just started the whole journey from one place to the next to the next because i always wanted to improve you know myself the product yeah. really stand behind you know what we were selling trying to actually help people that had like medical conditions i did we you know you don't want to see somebody just keep swallowing fistfuls of pills dude and they just more. feel terrible when like a little bit of weed takes away the nausea and like from their cancer treatments yep. and they're like it's so relieving that like and it's not as expensive so yeah hey i so for the listeners and it goes without saying everyone knows that i'm uh i'm i'm pretty much an idiot but i, I definitely don't have a medical degree uh so any advice that you hear in this uh is just conversation not medical advice at all talk to your primary physician and or medical expert for medical advice agreed just want to get Just that out of the way. Here, yeah. Same here. Personal opinions. <laughs> yeah. These are all personal opinions. Personal opinions. But, but I do know uh, for like, um, oh, what's that neurological disease where people have like seizures or shake? Yeah. Parkinson's. Um, I know it helps with Parkinson's a little bit. Yeah. It um, helps with a lot of things. Yeah. Um, but yeah, mostly like I know uh, epilepsy. Oh, uh, that's believe, it. Yes. Yep. Um, yep. People would have, you know, seizures and a little bit of, you know, tincture mm -hmm. um, right under the tongue or, you know, some lotion there were different ways to deliver it yeah um but that would definitely calm it seemed to calm the body from those shakes and the violent you know movements that they weren't consciously doing you know what's really sad man is uh like it was marijuana got lumped into the schedule one ban in the yeah. 60s mm -hmm. is that right yeah um and then before that was it was it illegal i mean i feel like i've I've read up on it and, you know, college and stuff like, you know, I know it's been legal in Nepal for okay. a little over 10,000 years or something like that. You know, they're, they're talking to God with that stuff out there. So, yeah. um, so it's just been around, I, I think. And, you know, anytime the government, you know, can kind of hop in and possibly make money or, you know, do things with it, they kind of, you know, all drugs, Yeah, I think lumped into one, including like, you know, alcohol, tobacco, firearms, just it's all kind of just a product to people nowadays. So, yeah. Hey everyone. Thank you so much for listening to the something, nothing, everything podcast without your support. This podcast couldn't happen. So I really appreciate it. If you have a moment, make sure you hit that like follow and subscribe button. And then if you want further information on how to get involved with the podcast, as far as submitting questions, go over to www.snepodcast.com. Again, that's www.snepodcast.com. Now back to the show. It's sad, man, because it's like you look at you look at how much the pharmaceutical company has in, intermingled itself with the government that we have today. Yeah, and it's it you want to you want to think that they have the best interest in mind, but then you start sitting back and realizing that like there's no reason, um, like marijuana being one of them, right? Like I've never smoked weed before, but I can. I have friends that have used it and stuff like that. And it's helped out with uh, like some PTSD. It's like not a, not a thing to con continually use in my opinion. Like if you have PTSD, just speaking to them, but it's helped them out through like really, really dark times and uh, had some breakthroughs with therapies and stuff like that. And so it, it, you know, you can take that or, or take uh, like a Xanax. Yeah. And it's like, why? Xanax seems like a slippery slope. You know, you it can't is, overdose yeah. on pot. Right. You know, it's just well, not Xanax, possible. Are Xanax benzodiazepines? I, I'm Benzos? not too well versed on Narcotic, pharmaceuticals yeah. anymore, yeah, yeah. Uh, but I just, I, I stay they, away from all of that. Yeah, dude, I just, I don't. Even when I got my uh, collarbone surgery and stuff, they gave me the oxycodone. Yeah, and oxycodone. Stuff, yeah. And uh, I just, I took it once and felt so like off. Mm -hmm. I was just like, I, I can't take this stuff, man. Yeah, so. it's, it's, but it, I think, you know, it just, uh, it helps with a lot of situations. Like, you know, just so people aren't taking all those pills 
Yeah. It just, you know, something to relieve the pain or a headache or nausea, you know, yeah. simple things. So you were working here. So, so backtrack, I met you through Griffin Payne and Christy Payne. Yes. Um, so you guys grew up together? Correct. I grew up with uh, Griffin uh, pretty much throughout high school and after college. Yeah. Been friends ever since. How'd you guys meet? Hockey. Oh, Playing okay. hockey together, yeah. Do you guys still play? Uh, not so much anymore. We'd like to. Okay. Uh, but yeah, you know, he's <laughs> got a family or not, and, you know, I got my job. So we have very minimal free time. Yeah. But yeah, yeah you know, I, I'd love to uh, check him into the boards again. Sounds like fun. <laughs> yeah, I had Christy on and she was talking about how he came in after playing one day and she found out that he was a hockey player. and She has a thing for hockey players. So that's what kicked it off in their relationship. I just think that's the funniest <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, girls like hockey players. Yeah. So I was never a hockey player, man. I grew up in upstate New York, but I would go to the ice rink and like do uh, teen skate. Okay, you know like open mean? skate. Yeah, yeah, they'd be like open skate Friday night. Take my girlfriend Ashley Chiz to the to the ice rink. Too nervous to hold her hand, you know. Right. <laughs> and then uh, yeah, but I was a decent skater, and I can still ice skate. I think we went to. Uh, didn't you come with us when we went to the open rink in Castle Rock? I believe so, yeah. With Ezra and everybody. Yeah. Yeah, so it's like I can still do it. It's just it's been a minute. Yeah. Yeah. So, but yeah, so then you when did you move out to Colorado? Uh 2011, 2012. What move what, what uh, I was about? working in Ohio uh as an oral surgeon assistant and mm-hmm. like a dental uh, assistant, x-ray tech. Uh, you know, did that for years. Mm-hmm. Just kind of got tired of it wanted a change uh came out here for a wedding um and was like oh why do i live in cleveland ohio like <laughs> this is beautiful out here so i moved uh maybe like four months after that i packed yeah. up all my stuff you know quit my job and moved out here to just start fresh where'd you move to did you find it uh golden okay yeah moved did to you golden. have a friend there no you just I completely just uprooted and started fresh Right on. I uh, started working at a pet store uh, for a little bit. Okay. I love animals. Uh, that was my first job, uh, 12 to 18. I started working when I was 12. Yeah. I'm a workhorse. I love it. Yeah, that's um, right. On. So, worked for them for a while and then started working at Chiba Hut downtown, the sandwich shop. I've never been to <clears> Are they still in business? They are. They are. Okay. It's an awesome place. If you ever go back in, you're like, I haven't been in a while, place. but yeah. It's uh, it was a really fun place with the the crew and the friends I had there. Cool. I still uh, work with some of those people. They ended up coming and working oh, okay. at, the, at Oleo. So, so walk me. You said some some random dude walked in and was like, "Hey, yeah." So walk, walk me through that. <clears throat> um, do you remember what day it was? Was it just no, like a random? Yeah, I, day? I couldn't tell you that kind of stuff. <laughs> um, it was just a random day. Uh, I'm not gonna name other company names. Sure. Uh, but they were. Uh, very close to where we were located mm-hmm. um, and then came in and asked, you know, like, Hey, how much you making here as a manager? I was like eight fifty. They They're like, you want to come trim weed for 10 bucks an hour? When was this? What year? 2013, 2014. Okay. Sounds about right. Yeah. So uh, the cost of living wasn't what it is now. Yeah. It was, I mean, I had a roommate at the time, so yeah. it was still expensive. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I was like, oh yeah, absolutely. So went and started doing that, and for another company, yeah, left Chiba. I mean, I kind of okay. worked at Chiba Hut a little bit. I would help them out on the weekends, but kind of yeah, transitioned yeah. to working for the uh, marijuana industry full time. So what is it? I've dude, I've I know like almost nothing about marijuana. I've literally, and I you know this is so back in North Carolina, it was illegal. Yeah, right. And uh, I wrote it wasn't an arrestable offense unless you had a significant amount. Fair. Like we could arrest people on it, but it was, it was pretty well frowned upon. And um, so, I mean, I've written many a summons, which ended up in Durham pretty much being like, okay, here's community service. The one thing I will stand by is like adolescence in marijuana and waiting to do it. In my opinion, um, just from a, just from a standpoint of psychological development. Right. Fair. But that goes to anything. That's like alcohol, tobacco. There it is right there. Like, every, <clears throat> like I'm not talking just yeah. marijuana. That's to include mushrooms nowadays. Yeah, kids are looking for that kind of stuff. I yeah, mean, yeah. I know we did. We were looking for booze when we were yep. young and, you know. Well, the problem the problem with it, to get off on a quick tangent, the problem with it is um is there's no there's no structure around using any of this stuff. Right? 
like if you if you look at the Native Americans or the indigenous people, whatever you want to call them, even tobacco use was a ritual, right? Yeah. They found a way to take a plant and make it meaningful. Spiritual to them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But in and so if you ever go to the Japan, and I know this because my wife lived there for a while, if you go to Japan drinking, you're not going to go to a dinner and like pound down drinks. You don't even really drink until someone cheers and then you all take a sip and that is it. So if you get there and you're like pounding down drinks, they're like, what is wrong with this dude? But in America, we have no structure. Yeah. We've got no, it's like an indulge. It's, it's consume, consume, consume. And it's, it's this constant, um, you know, full throttle approach to like everything. And I, and I think it's a detriment across the board, alcohol, tobacco, um, just marijuana. Gluttony. Yeah, it's yeah. Just gluttony in its finest. But that's, uh, you know, that's kind of where I stand. I think so for like teenagers, especially um, when they're trying to figure out who they are, what they're going to be and everything else like that. It's like, all right, I get the age of 21 on there. Like, are they going to do it when they're 18? Probably because they probably have friends that are over 21. But, you know, you can you can try to control it as much as possible. I think it's all a rebellious thing. You know, like, I think we all go through that rebellious phase in, like, you know, high school, right around, like, 14, 15, you know, like, mm-hmm. F you, mom and dad, and, you know, I know best kind of attitude. <laughs> but, you know, it's, you know, it yeah. is what it is, you know. So <clears throat> a lot of those kids go to high school parties, drink, stuff like that. So um, I was definitely one of the bad kids. Bad so, influences. Yeah, yeah. Um, your but, mom, your mom's probably like, you're never going to get a job if you keep smoking that weed, Sean. Exactly. I actually like, had a lot of those. People well, well, mom, like, you know, you don't uh, know the future. <laughs> I know our math teacher used to say you're not going to have a calculator in your pocket. And I was like, well, oh, yeah, no. you haven't seen the iPhone yet. So, it's insane, man. You know, it's uh, but nowadays, honestly, like you were saying, um, I think that it's since it's legal, kids don't really care anymore. I've kind of yeah. noticed that with like some younger kids that they just don't care because they're like, eh, yeah, everybody's got those pens and stuff, whatever. Yeah. But for us, it was like, oh, you have to know somebody and then you only get a limited amount. And it's well, like, and it's like trim. Yeah. Right. It was, oh, it was terrible. It's All like garbage. stuff we had in the 90s. And was then it's trash. like these kids are walking around with like potent <laughs> oh, yeah. dab pens. Oh, yeah. And it's like stuff dude. nowadays is just top tier. Like we well, have to have it pass like microbial potency, yeah. heavy metals residual solvents like it's it's intense so again it it goes back to the uh the kids that i do see with it um because i work well i work for an agency in the in the denver metro area as a law enforcement officer and i worked an off-duty position and it's it tends to be a certain group of kids like it it doesn't it's not it's not like wildfire in the high schools anymore right? right Yeah. And it's like, there's a, there's a group of kids, like maybe five or 10 of them that all do it together. And it's like, can certain, certain people jump into that group? Sure. But it's not like, I'm trying to equate it to something. It's like, you know, they, uh, you know, the groups in high school, it's like, you got the motorheads, guys that all work on cars, the jocks, the stoners, like, so they all had their little groups. So, you know, I think that's still kind of prevalent probably today. Yeah. I would say so, and it, but you're right. I don't I don't see it uh, like it was when I was growing in upstate New York. Like everybody, everybody did it. Like every single kid, and I was just like, "What the f is going on?" Yeah, and like I was, I was, I was, I was scared shitless, yeah. dude. I was like, "I'm not gonna smoke that" because like I've seen the I've seen the commercials with the egg on the frying yep. pan, and this, this is, is your brain, brain on drugs. <laughs> So, no, yeah, more shit, like you're making some scrambled me. eggs because you got the munchies. I know, right? Right. Yeah. Hindsight 2020. Right. You know, and that's the thing is like, even though I've never used, it's still been interesting to like talk to really close friends that have never used their entire life. And then they retire from the military. They get a civilian job. The civilian job doesn't care. And they're like, dude, I smoked weed for the first time. Let me tell you. Got a little paranoid. <laughs> and then after that, they're like, most of the time they're like, I just felt so in the moment. That's what a lot of, like, I have three friends that have all like government jobs to civilian jobs and now can smoke weed. And uh, they're like, I've never felt more in the moment in my entire life. 
like everything, just all the background noise and the chatter of thinking of what I had to do just went away. And, um, so, and I don't even get that with alcohol, like with alcohol, it's more of just like a, for me, I don't drink that much to get drunk unless I'm like going somewhere like I'm in Las Vegas or something. But even then I'm still thinking of like, oh man, like the lingering thought of the hangover. (laughs) I actually don't drink anymore. I I drank so much like up until 21 that I went to Vegas and just blew the roof off. For your 21st? Yeah, all the way like for my 21st birthday and then I just couldn't drink anymore. Yeah. Like never wanted to smell it, taste it I'm not drinking today. This is like the first podcast I'm drinking water. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, so I, I... pretty much quit alcohol um, right around then. So that's, that was a good, uh, a good point in my life. I was a, was an angry little leprechaun. Yeah. I'm an Irish guy. So I always wanted to fight. When you got drunk. Yep. So that's a good thing. That I I'm just not get fighting very, anymore. Speaking about, I just get very like, all right. I, so you already, we've had conversations about like my philosophical views about everything of like nothing, I think this is real. At least it, it like this reality seems real to me, but at the same time, it might not be. And I'm okay with that. Um, and, uh, so when I'm drunk, I just get in this point of like, nah, nothing matters. Not in an anger way of like, if someone bumps into me, drops my, like I was in Las Vegas and we were on the dance floor and somebody bumps into me and drops drinks. Aren't cheap. It was like, it was like 25 bucks. (laughs) It's ridiculous. It was nuts, man. Um, so he knocks my drink over and the guy's like, Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm like, bro, don't even worry about it. And he's like, here, do you want my drink? I'm like, no, I'm good. Don't worry about it though. Like, and then he knocked over somebody else's drink. This guy was slosh knocked over somebody else's drink. The guy like turns around, like cocked, getting ready to knock him out. I'm like, good God. But so going back to the marijuana thing. So how, so what is the process from like, Plant. Just kind of like starting. Yeah. Like, oh, so, so <clears throat> it's a wild plant, right? Yeah. So where like, the fuck did it go? What do you mean? I never see wild marijuana and I hike a lot. It's because it's not, it was either a cut down or, you know, it got picked, but you would need it to, it's a seeding plant. So it would need to like propagate itself in the area. Okay. You pretty much need human intervention to at this like kind of start it. Yeah. But then where it would, would it grow? Off hillsides just open areas all Um, across the united states you know i'm not one for uh like outdoor yeah like growing that kind of stuff i mean we do all of ours indoor okay um but i know that people out in ohio you know uh grow you just have like a season for it uh california you know uh humboldt and all yeah up north Yeah. yeah yeah they have such beautiful weather all the time that's why they can just grow it outside it grows on hillsides but like if you live in cleveland ohio you're going to be dealing with crap weather lots of yeah, rain yeah. no sun so, yeah i know like up in illinois every now and then it'll grow in a ditch and they yeah. call it ditch weed it's like it's literally like <laughs> yep in the ditch and it's weed yeah um, so uh you know but you don't want to let's say like your apples grown like that from you know if you were buying them so we want to make sure it's like a nice healthy regulated clean product so yeah yeah we try to take uh good care of it do you guys use gmos no we have a i would say we have a strain called gmo it's a garlic (laughs) mushroom or yeah garlic mushroom and onion (laughs) you know people like weird flavors so but uh, so so from the moment uh like what did the what do the seeds look like they look like little brown seeds okay yeah um and usually for us one plant yeah for us we have uh certain genetic lines okay so if you think of like an apple tree and orange tree so on and so forth we have a certain strain mm-hmm. and we propagate just that strain by cutting little clones off of like a mother plant mm-hmm. that we would grow up and then we clone those grow those up into a like a vegetative state what do you mean by clone so you would take a snip from like the mom and you dip it in uh alcohol like a membrane loosening solution uh and then stick it in like a rock wool cube mm-hmm. and then that'll reroute and repropagate itself why the itself. alcohol uh it breaks down like cell walls i oh, believe okay. I'm not much of a scientist i'm more the hands-on guy <laughs> so is it self uh propagate uh with the seeds it can yeah like it, so a seed is a male plant 
okay. then we grow nothing but females because they are the budding part of it. Oh, okay. So uh, we would use, you know, just moms across the board, just females, females, females. Because if you have a male, nobody wants seeds in their weed anymore. So okay. you want to grow it with no seeds. Oh, okay. <laughs> and it's easier to do that inside, I'm assuming. Yes. Yeah. You, so you just take uh, all female plants and. How do you. Eat. How do they prop? Is it pollen? Yes, yeah, so you'd use like a male pollen if you wanted to propagate. We have like an in-house breeder that does like different strains cross together and stuff like that. Yeah, so the controlled air. I just yeah. imagine this is like kind of like Breaking Bad, where you guys have like Tyvek suits, gas mask, yeah. and you're walking yeah. through. Like, well, I mean, it is very similar. We have a lot of regulations, so like if we are applying pesticides and stuff, you know, other companies have in the past. Yeah, um, you do have to wear like a Tyvek and respiratory and stuff like that, just because like. They want you to be safe. They Can I do a field trip? Yeah, you could absolutely come by. I'm going to hit you up. Dude. Yeah, that'd be awesome. I'm going to come over one time. Um, but yeah, so like we'll take uh, a bunch of cuttings of like one strain. Yeah. Uh, kind of let that grow up. And that's from, uh, so get, what were the, I know Purple uh, like, Haze is like one that's yeah. like a legacy. Uh, right? One of my favorites is Purple Marmalade. Okay. I love it. Um, so that, how did, uh, let me, let me, I know we're kind of jumping all around the place, good. but yeah. with the actual, how did this shit get started? Like, like who started growing back, weed first? Yeah, like, I guess who decided to look at weed and be like, mm, I'm going to make different flavors out of this. So, and like how, you know, it's kind of like, uh, you have different varieties of fruit. Yeah. You know, like different, you have blood oranges, normal yep. oranges, clementines, tangerine, you know, I'm an like, apple guy. So like the, uh, fair, the gala just, apples, I don't like fruit at all. Honey, so I'm honey, just using it as an example. You got to eat a cup of fruit. No. Once a day, man. Although I, I do know you're drinking Mountain Dew. I think the first ingredient on this says orange juice. It's water. People tell me I don't drink enough water. That's the yeah, first carbonated, ingredient is water. Okay, so it does say high yeah. fructose corn syrup. But third ingredient, concentrated orange juice. There There's your fruit. That's why I haven't died of scurvy. It's concentrated orange. You're probably getting a boatload of vitamin C, dog. I feel good. <laughs> I'm doing pretty you look good. good I'm, man. I'm about to turn 38 yeah. next week. Yeah, so. you look good. You look like you're still like 28. Trying. You know, it keeps yeah. me young. Preservatives. Yeah, there you go. So I guess, yeah, who was the first person to look at this and then figure out, oh, if we do this and this, it'll make this flavor? There's a lot of different breeders. Uh, I don't really want to name drop okay. at all because yeah, yeah. um, a lot of those guys are big wigs and stuff yeah, like yeah. that. But uh, get sued. yeah, you just kind of, it's trial and error. You know, um, I know. There was a guy who loved the blueberry strain, so he wanted he liked how big it grew, how but, well it grew. They all grow differently. Yeah, it, like some small, some big. Yeah, like there's different varieties. But so did they find it like randomly hiking one day? Probably like years of crossbreeding and genetic okay. genetic hunting. Oh, okay. You're looking for a certain thing. It's like breeding animals. Yeah, you just you know it's like that Punnett square with, we used to do in school with rabbits. It's like yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, recessive recessive yeah exactly like you're looking for certain genes dominant genes good root systems yeah. healthy growth big nugs yeah that kind of stuff so. so are you uh so i know with wine um because i used to i'm not a wine connoisseur at all but i do enjoy going to vineyards and stuff like that and there's legacy like grapes mm -hmm. and, and vineyards and stuff like that is yep. it very similar yeah we have a few like pre-98 bubba kush is a okay. strain but it's like from the you know Humboldt pre nineteen ninety eight, like it's supposedly you know all that strain, yeah, that cut, um, you know, and nowadays it's very polluted. You know, a lot of people could just say it's one thing, and you know who's going to be able to fact check or yeah. prove check, them wrong? Check purity. Yeah, exactly. So, um, but certain, you know, you can tell, you know, uh, by certain ones just how they smell, how they taste. Um, the one I love just tastes like a. Uh, Oranges, mm. you know, okay. oranges, a little bit of a skunky aroma. But, and it's, uh, is it by looking, the flavor, the smell is how you determine? I mean, I you know, you can try all different things. So they have different terpenes. I'm not, oh, like okay. I said, I'm not a scientist, yeah, yeah, yeah. but like different terpenes do different things. Okay. Um. So like mine, like I think that I bond well with is limonene, but there's, you know, myrcene, um, there's a and bunch of, I think do? there's like, they're, they're, yeah, they're kind of, it's like the, the lock and key system in your brain. Yeah. It's like your, uh, blood brain barrier yep. on how it receives certain like THC, THC receptors. Okay. 
Um, so people receive them differently. Mm -hmm. Um, so, you know, some strains can affect people different ways. Uh, I know sativas can kind of trigger people to have like anxiety, you know, kind of stress them out, get their heart rate going. And then indicas tend to push people like, you know, sleepy and chill, Mm -hmm. but, uh, you those know, then the there's hybrids. Main, I was about to say those are the two. Yeah, then you have like mixes and stuff like that. But so you clone it. We grow it up to a vegetative state, okay. kind of get it to a certain size, and then that's uh, then you flip it over in a different light cycle, so it thinks it's like nighttime, daytime, nighttime, daytime. Oh, okay. So at one point you're just blasting it with a constant. Yeah, just constant light. Okay, to keeping it, to it just kind of neutral. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and then it'll start producing buds so is it the stress of the nighttime and stuff like that that causes yeah it just it it thinks the seasons are changing okay so it wants to produce fruit i would say yeah you know before the winter comes isn't that crazy so like yeah it 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 definitely goes by the light cycles i think it's so fascinating how uh intuitive humans are with like that type of picking up on that kind of stuff yeah you know what i mean dude the science behind this has taken off so much in the past 10 years like I learn new things every day. Well, it's because you're not getting rated for being on a Reddit forum. Fair. You know, and we're you doing things with the state. <laughs> you know? We're paying, you know, taxes yeah. and all that stuff. We're working with them. We have the uh, fire department come through all the time. Yeah. Um, they, check your you know, systems. Yeah, they love stuff. it. Yeah. And we're, you know, like, oh, you guys are following all the rules. Like, you know, yeah. other places don't do that. Like, yeah. it's awesome. You guys are really doing something here. So we're, and we're like, hey, we're just trying. Yeah. That's, uh, I just always think it's so crazy that we can take a plant and, uh, put it in an environment that doesn't seem natural, but emulate natural. Well, it doesn't seem natural because you have to be clean and everything else like that. Uh, it'll produce the most, but you know, it's interesting because then it's, it's like we emulate nature, but we control all the variables to see what things happen. It's like a frog in a jar. You put the stick and the leaf in there to recreate yeah. his environment. Yeah. Like, all right, now I'm going to keep him alive, but this is what he's used to. Yep. Yeah. You don't stress him out too much. Yeah. So, um, so then we just grow them up and then we harvest them. So then there's two different processes. Um, if you want to do concentrates, which is what we do, okay. uh, we, you know, you want to freeze it. So we use, you know, you throw it in a freezer. So it kind of preserves it as super fresh. So your the growing up phase. How long does that take? Uh, different strains take different amount of time. Uh, so I would say in general, um, you know, you have like eight to 10 week strains. Okay, that's a pretty quick turnaround. Yeah. That's not bad. Um, and then in the time, going to what you initially did, you trimmed? What does that mean? That's still coming later. Oh, okay. Yeah, So, but you would still be cutting clones. You want to be able to keep – this is like in our industry, it's a very – you know, you have to worry about the next step. So yeah. we have to keep doing those things. You have to keep cloning. You have to keep moving on because – you're producing a product. And you're it's like a conveyor not, belt. Yeah, it's like yeah. a watch. We need all the pieces to be moving. And you're in trying the same not direction. to cross contaminate at the same time. Exactly. Okay. Cleanliness is very important. Yeah. Um, and then you know you can freeze it for multiple purposes. Um, other companies used to just sell it um, to other companies to use for different things. Like the bud. Yeah, you can sell like the frozen material, and they'll um, blast it with either you know like butane, propane. And that'll pretty much like wash all the trichomes off and you'll have like a concentrate okay. and they'll use those in pens, edibles, stuff like that. Um, then you can also just dry the flower and let it hang, kind of cure it up. Okay. Um, and then that's what you would like roll up and smoke. Is it pretty unusable when it, when it comes straight off the plant? It's pretty wet. Okay. Yeah. So that's, I always found interesting in like movies when they like find a field of it and they're like, yeah, oh, this smells so good. And they just rip some off and start smoking it. It's like, that wouldn't work. (laughs) It wouldn't work at all. You'd be sitting there just like trying to light it on fire. It'd be like pretty moist. Yeah. Yeah. So they're like trying to light an orange on fire. Cause I know, well, have they ever done a THC dip? What do you mean? Like tobacco. Um, I mean, you can do anything nowadays. To be but fair, no one's but doing it. you can't do tobacco in a lot of things, like because that's a separate. Like you know how you have to have an alcohol license to sell. No, alcohol. I'm I'm saying like marijuana dip. Oh, fair. Like just straight chew. Uh, fair. I don't know if people would want to do that. Um, you know, because it's roughly like an edible. 
you could just eat a piece of candy that would have the THC in it that yeah, would but get then me. You're not, then you're not dipping. You're just not looking cool. Yeah. You dude. just want to spit into a can. Yeah. Ding. <laughs> the old cowboy No style. one's done it. No, fair. Yeah. You know, uh, I've seen a couple of things like infused toothpicks. Okay. Um, you know, because they'll put like the, the oil. THC oil on yeah. there and then you like kind of chewing on it and sucking on it. Yeah. Um, there's been a lot of products. Uh, there's a you know, like a powdered one I know on in the market that you can just add to things, just all different kinds of things nowadays. Yeah. It it, so it, it opened the door for multiple companies to come in and try all different things. And yeah, sometimes you have like collaborations where you work together and yeah. we can, you know, like, oh, hey, we'll we'll grow the flower. You guys do this with it and we'll put our names on it and sell it together. And it's it's a fun community. They, mm -hmm. you know, we all tend to know mm -hmm. each other. We've all worked, you know, at jobs. Some some people tend to move around a lot. But is that by choice? You know, I, I just think everybody in this world is looking for something. You know, they just want the best option for themselves, which you can't blame them. Yeah. But like, you know, if you, you know, McDonald's is a job. Like, uh, you know, being a full-time mother is a job. Like, and, you know, c construction worker, anything. Like, you know, you want to make it better for yourself, but, you know, minimum wage jobs exist and yeah, we've all done them. So is it, is, uh, is like entering into that field most of the time, minimum wage? Well, yeah, it's, you know, Denver minimum wage on most of them, like trimming, like you said, that's after it's all dry. Mm -hmm. You have like little crusty leaves on the outside. We just try to get that off to make it nice and presentable for people. It serves no other purpose. Yeah. It's just like kind of getting dead leaf off, but you want that on there for the curing process <clears throat> to dry it out. Yeah. As it's like drying out, it sucks up all the sugars and starches and makes the nug really awesome and crystally and hmm. stinky and sticky. It's interesting. Yeah. So and it's all, let me go back and tidy this up. Pretty much. I was looking at like, it uh, seems time consuming. Oh, excessively. Exce I mean, cause if uh, like, I, I can't really describe it. Like it just looks very ugly untrimmed. <laughs> okay. And then it looks gorgeous once it's trimmed. <laughs> So it's like, there's no way we could sell to somebody. Me, I would and just then you be trim like, it oh, up and weird. you look at it, you're like, wow, that looks really nice. It just kind of has like the big fan leaves that kind of sit oh, underneath yeah. the buds. Yep. When you hang it upside down, they just tend to kind of like drape over the nug. Mm -hmm. So you like usually get those off, but yeah. And there's smaller ones too. Yeah. You just want to trim it up a little bit. And then people take that trim and sell it. You can also sell the trim because it has trichomes and crystals and stuff on it. Okay. So you can extract that. And make edibles. And okay. Some people roll joints with it. How did they make hashish? Hash back in the day. Or ha yeah. So I am. Um, I'm not a big one on knowing how to do like the Rick Simpson oil. Yeah. Or yeah. anything like that. Um, I know a lot of people that uh, love that stuff. I like, just I've used it in the past and said good things about it. Well, the, I had a friend of mine that was experimenting with a lot of things, and he went to the moon, and he's like, "I will never smoke." <laughs> Hash again in my life. Um, yeah, we do a different, you know, different processes. Um, you know, I'm not giving, you know, proprietary information away. Yeah. But you can uh you can roughly just take like, you know, frozen weed okay. um and you can wash it in a big washing machine. Um all of these videos, you know, unfortunately exist on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Um and it's just pretty much uh washing it. And then you strain it through like bags to just get like the trichomes off of it. Yeah. Dry that out and then you can do different things. That's what people call like bubble hash. Okay. Stuff like that. Then you can press that. And that's what makes like rosin. Okay. The videos you see online, people like squeezing it on a hydraulic press. Yeah, the oils come out. Yeah, yeah. And then you just collect all that and So why not do that when it's moist? The so you would get a lot of green in it. Okay. Uh just pressing straight plant material. Just so what you're doing when you wash it is you're getting like all the biomass out. Oh, okay. you're kind of like refining it. It comes out looking kind of like uh, wet sand, usually pretty white. Kind of looks like cocaine. <laughs> Similar, but <laughs> you know, I don't know. But uh, for movies, yeah. But it's just like uh, all the trichome. It's it smells amazing too. Yeah. But it's just like kind of washing and cleaning the product. Like you don't, unless you're drying it to smoke it, you're just getting rid of all the plant material. Yeah. That makes sense. Keeping the people, all the good stuff. The people that are like, oh, 
I hate the smell of marijuana. I'm like, I think it smells like nature. I like worked it, in it the smells... dental field, and let me tell you, teeth smell terrible. Oh, God, yeah. Yanking teeth at the oral surgeon's office Dude, and bacteria. throwing those teeth into a bin. That bin only got collected like once a month by the one department. So you'd like lift the lid, throw the teeth in real quick and close it. And you'd be mm-hmm. like, I don't think, I think I got it in there fast enough. And then the whole room, you're like, oh no, it smells so bad. It's but now terrible. You're working with marijuana. Yeah. Now I traded bad smells for good smells. Yeah. I love it. Walking into work, just like, hmm, what are you guys working on today? So what do you do now? Uh, so I'm like a facility manager. I've kind of like picked up, unfortunately, I'm like a jack of all trades, uh, anything and everything. I know all the processes. I know how to clone. I know how to grow. I know how to water. I know how to, you know, you have to clean a lot. You have to make sure everything's sterile, nice and clean. Is that for, organized. Is that for the testing process or just so that you don't get crossbreeding when crossbreeding or both? Yeah. Uh, I mean, just, I mean, in general, you want your facility to be clean, look nice. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's easier to, you know, find tools if they're where they're supposed to be. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we have like, uh, testing facility that comes by and to pick up their, uh, their, our testing samples and we send them out, you know, weekly, um, almost daily to be fair. You know, we're, it's a big process. So we're constantly trying to yeah. keep up with appeasing everybody. We have a very good product. I, I love our product. Um, so trying now, to make guys, everybody happy. Do yeah. You we, guys sell direct to consumers or like star buds. So we are oh, also sorry, like, I name drop. No, you're good. <laughs> That's the only one I know. Cause I worked in Aurora for a little bit. Fair. Um, yeah, we also uh, are affiliated with Higher Grade uh, downtown. Okay. There's a couple locations. Um, but yeah, Olio, we sell to all dispensaries. Okay. If, yeah. If, Is it direct to consumer too if somebody reaches out to you? No. Okay. No. Yeah, you have to go through a dispensary. A lot. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so we'll, we'll ship them like a bunch of units and then they'll sell it in their stores. Um, but then our stuff that we're kind of affiliated with, we can go there and buy our own product because yeah. we don't really have a storefront now what is uh what does the future of marijuana look like for you um like in an ideal well we're gonna we're gonna strip all cultural norms all right real quick in an ideal world what does it look like to you it looks like uh i think a fantastic future you know i i always want to be in positive attitude yeah and i think that you know if it helps get people off of like heavy medications, Mm -hmm. uh, which I've seen it do. Uh, it helped me, you know, quit drinking. I didn't want to drink and it helped me kind of like take that edge off without like going full tilt. Um, I think, you know, it's a great industry with great people. Um, you know, just like, you know, you're a police officer, you know, Mm -hmm. you you know what it's like, you, you hope what you're doing out there is helping other people. You want to help society and just also coexist. Yeah. We're just producing a product kind of like, you know, McDonald's. Like, hey, you got some burgers and fries. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, you know, we're producing, you know, like we recently came out with some new uh, sour raspberry uh, ad- edibles. Okay. Fantastic. Uh, we have an all-in-one cart, just one of those little pen things that you can puff on. Um, just awesome products. Like, it, it, it's ever-changing. Yeah. So I, mean, I mean more like society-based. So, like, for me... One of the, I, I, I it's just, you know, they're, you know, I mean, it's like alcohol, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's just, you know, you can start your own brewery Yep. or like, you know, make your own liquor, Yep. you know, Jack Daniels after prohibition ended, you know, they came in and yeah started making liquor and became, you know, a huge producer. Yeah. <laughs> uh, just like Coors think, and Golden, man. Dude, I, I just, used to ride my bike by that place. It was, it's huge. Yeah. I just got some, they're doing whiskeys now. Really? Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, it's nuts. Uh, My buddy uh uh Kyle came over for a podcast. He'll be he'll be posted up soon. Um, but he busted out, he like brought it over. I was like, I didn't know they did whiskeys. That's nuts. Yeah. yeah. So you they know, it's everything. it's a product, you know, it's yeah. just producing an awesome product that people can purchase. I think like society, the biggest thing that bothers me is like the the and you know my views on drugs is like I'm super libertarian. Like to to the extent of like if it's natural. I know that sounds weird because technically everything's natural, right? Yeah. But I mean, excessive, like if you're, if you're running a pharmaceutical company in your house, no bueno, right? Fair. So meth, uh, cocaine, 
God, what else? What else is there? You can make heroin in your house, I think. <laughs> you kinda, you kinda know like, better than me. I, I don't know. I've never seen a heroin. Most of the time it's imported. But I've definitely seen shake and bake meth, and I've definitely seen somebody try to make cocaine in their house, and it didn't work out. Their house went kaboom. Yeah. Um, that, you had that a lot it, when I moved out here. Gasoline. Yeah, when I know? moved out here, people were open blasting uh, weed with, like, butane cans yeah and i remember up. hearing about it on the news constantly yeah. about like people doing that in their garage yeah. and all the gas just builds up and hits like yeah. their hot water heater and boom yep yeah. whole house gone no so what uh so that's like my view my view is like if you're gonna do something uh let it be natural let it not be entangled with the pharmaceutical company yeah and I, the other thing is is don't let it hurt somebody else right i agree so if you're sitting there smoking weed it doesn't hurt anybody no. The second it hurts somebody is when you get behind the wheel and kind of roll the dice. Fair. And it's like um, mostly just because it's like we doing DUI, like traffic stops before, gone up thinking somebody's drunk. And it's like I go up and I'm like, I'm smelling no alcohol, but my God, does this car <laughs> reek of burnt pot. Fair. And it's like they're 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 in the phase of like they don't really know what's going on. They their eyes are like resting the stagmus where they're like twitching. I'm like, God, can you see straight right now? And they're like, Uh, yeah, everything's fine. I'm like, all right. I've heard of uh, so. ambient drivers. Yep, like, Amb- just, dude, they're bad. That's crazy. See, well, that's, like, it's pharma. so I don't it's think big it's pharma. just it's not weed. just yeah. no, absolutely not. And by no means do and I people mean just weed. suck at driving. Let me just point that out. Like yeah. nowadays, yeah, yeah, it doesn't matter where you go. But my thing is, is I would in an ideal society. We would have cars that fully drive themselves, so it doesn't matter what you use. So if Road rage gone. Road rage gone. Yeah. If you wake up in the morning and you suffer from chronic depression, right? And no matter what you and, and I'm not a I'm not a fan of our current big pharma SSRIs antidepressant protocol at all. But I know a lot of my military friends who microdose every single day, and I'm talking minuscule amounts of mushrooms, minuscule. Um, to the point where they don't even like, they don't feel any different. They just don't feel depressed. Fair. I've heard about microdosing with mushrooms. Yeah. I personally haven't really tried it. Uh, yeah. Um, it's, but this, th- it's, it's one of those things. So in an ideal world, you wake up in the morning, if marijuana helps you out with anxiety and you work an office job, yeah. you know, you should probably still work on the baseline anxiety, go, like, go talk to a therapist and work on that. But if you have something like a, like I view it almost as like a supplement, right? Fair. Like if you can take that supplement in the morning to help you get through the day and be productive, relaxed, and everything else, that's good. Yeah. That's a good thing. That's not a bad thing. But it's the driving the cars, heavy machinery, and stuff like that, right? So in an ideal world for me, you get rid of the heavy cars and in, in, in equipment. I actually went to a stunt driving school oh, for, did you really? for a while. <laughs> um, I wanted to be a stunt person. That's why I was going into firefighting. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, because yeah, I yeah. want to be lit on fire. So I figured that was a good basis is to know about <laughs> firefighting. I, you know, 18, man. Yeah. Um, but I remember the instructors saying, like, you know, every once in a while, they would have, like, an instructor's night where they would all just drink beer and play on the skid pad, which mm-hmm. is just, like, a big circle that has a sprinkler that you can drift on. And they're like, you know what? A lot of the instructors, after, like, two beers, got better. Mm-hmm. But they're like, then the, at number four, they like couldn't do it without spinning out constantly. Yeah. So it's like, you know, it's that fine balance. I think, like you said, just, you know, we have certain limits for everything. I yeah. know, like, if you're a pilot, you're allowed to have even less alcohol, yeah. pretty much none, I would hope. Um, but yeah, it's just like, if it's not hurting anyone, it helps you get through your day, you know, more power to you. Yeah. You know, it, it's, it's a lesser of multiple evils, I think, in this world. And yeah. it's a plant. It's very exactly. clean and organic. They're, yep. We're not adding anything to it. Like It's so wild to me that like the federal government came in and said, this plant <laughs> that grows everywhere is now illegal. Right. I mean, That's like them coming. Can you imagine if they're like, hey, Kentucky bluegrass? Find out if you eat that shit. Sunflowers, illegal. Right. It's like, oh, yeah. Per- like, But I'm talking like Kentucky blue, right? Everyone yeah. has it. Right. Like growing across the United States. Yeah. If they're like, oh, if you eat that, there's like trace amounts of psilocybin. So they're 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 growing it, they're they're fermenting it and they're drinking it as a hooch. We're gonna ban it. It's illegal. I mean, I don't know why I'm talking yeah. like Donald No, Trump. I like it. I like but it. like you know what I mean? It's it's so asinine. No, it's and how is that ever gonna work? 
I used like, to hear about the uh, if you eat a lot of poppy seeds, you would oh, test positive pop, for yeah. opium. Uh, but is then that I've true? Also, no, I've heard you'd have to eat like a truckload. That would scare. And who cares? It, Just well, you know, smoke opium if you're gonna do it. Like, <laughs> well, it scared know. the shit out of me when I was getting random drug tested in the military. Right. It's like, where do you think I'm getting that from, though? It's Bro, like, who it'd has be like, opium? I would like, love the. Uh, it's like having lewds. Like those don't exist anymore. Yeah. <laughs> well, the uh, the California state flower is uh, poppy. Is it really? Yeah. Pretty sure it is. Ours should be a weed leaf. <laughs> Should be Colorado with the little. It's that well. Little. It's that really pretty purple leaf or uh, flower. I forgot what it's called. No, and that's the other thing. Like all the strain, they they all grow differently, and they mm-hmm. are beautiful. Yeah, like some come out purple, some are yellow, some are red, some are orange. Like mm. some are really white. It's just phenomenal that all the varieties. Yeah, where do you see? Uh, so they they in twenty twenty three, they decriminalized mushrooms. I Denver, don't really follow that kind of stuff. And stuff. Fair. So I, I for a lot from an outsider, right? So I wasn't around or really even tracking marijuana. Um, when I was in like twenty, I was I was in high school. So twenty eleven is when they legalized it out here, or twenty ten or something. Yeah, like something that. like yeah, twenty twelve. And uh, so, but what I knew they did before that is they kind of decriminalized it. So they were just were like, yeah, if you have small amounts, we're not charging you. Fair. Um, and then they went to the full legislation of, hey, we're going to do recreational marijuana now. So I see that kind of the path with mushrooms now, too, like the psychedelic mushrooms in Denver, um, where it's uh, small amounts. You, it's personal possession. Um, the law is a little finicky because it's 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 I think it's only in Denver. You know, I don't know, but personally, I think like, you know. I know that it's a psychedelic. I've I've done it a few times in the past, mm-hmm. and to think like they're just gonna let people let people take mushrooms and just let loose. Well, like, like driving isn't bad enough in Denver already. Yeah, but then you got people like, well, I got on this ramp. Like <laughs> that's not a ramp, and they just drive yeah. off the edge. But Stop like, signs yeah, talking it's, to me. Yeah, it's like a hallucinogen. Like I couldn't even fathom driving on that stuff yeah. when I was on it. So, well, it goes back to the. Uh, you know, what I said earlier is we don't have any rituals. You know, I would, I would, I would really, really enjoy if I ever get the opportunity once I'm done with law enforcement, and everything else like that, because I think it's, I think the psychedelic experience, uh, the only one that I ever did was uh, ketamine. Okay. And that was from a, from a clinician uh, administering ketamine. And that, that was, uh, it was strangely psychedelic. Um, talking to friends that have done psilocybin before DMT, uh, it's it's weird how each one kind of falls in its own little category. Mm-hmm. Uh, but dude, that K hole and then going into nothing uh, was super duper intense. But it was nice because it was a therapy session, and um, you know they were talking through it, and it was the set and setting, right? It wasn't like, oh, let me just kind of try this, and uh, yeah, can you watch me as I lay on this couch? Yeah, I was you curious know I mean? how, like how that went. Like you're just in a room. Right? Yeah, I was in a. It was like a. It was like a therapy room. It was really relaxing. Um, you know, they 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 prep you, right? Fair. They're like, hey, you might experience this. You might experience that. Um, just everything's gonna be okay. I'll be here. Um, if you if you get stressed out, let me know, and like we can change the music and everything. Like it's such a dissociative though. Like I don't even remember anything that went on in the room. Like you, you, I <clears throat> have you ever used it before? No. So you get ripped out of your body is the best way I explain it. It's very, so my friends that have done DMT have explained like ayahuasca and stuff. Yeah. I've heard they're that like your well. soul gets ripped out of your body, but you go into a different dimension. Yeah. You're in With space. With ketamine, it's yeah. like this abyss of, of nothing. You go into nothing. It, it's the, uh, it's the epitome of like what probably atheists believe is death brain trips me out man it, it can produce it's a lot so of these weird, chemicals man. on its own but like well, it's so deep like yeah well ketamine it can it can it can process ketamine i don't think your brain creates ketamine but no it, it doesn't does, create it, yeah it does create dmt but yeah serotonin dopamine like, yep, you know for sure yeah, yeah it's got all the ingredients to make you happy at any yep. given time it's yep. kind of like a you know a little withholding like you could yeah. be happy all the time but it's like i'm gonna make you feel shitty today that's a human <laughs> existence though fair but don't you, know, you feel that way oh yeah like I feel like I feel pain and suffering is very human. I 
I don't know, just as being like a hockey player and just like yeah. kind of like an aggressive guy in general, like, you know, especially when I was drinking, um, we just kind of helped me calm down. Chill. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. why, why are you so aggressive, man? Yeah. And it's really helped like calm me down nowadays is just kind of not just flying off the handle. I mean, it's still there. You know, I'm still a hockey when player. Was the first I'm still time ready you to ever go. used pot. Uh, about like 13, 14. What was that like? Uh, we were hiding across the street from my mom's house, smoking it out of a bowl with a stone cold Steve Austin lighter. <laughs> I remember it was like it was yesterday. Oh, um, brother. Yeah. First couple times, honestly, I smoked it. I really didn't feel like I got high. Really? But like other people who I was with were obviously high. They were coming up with terrible ideas. Like mm. we should go ride the four wheeler right now. It's like, it's three in the morning. No. <laughs> um so like yeah but then uh one time like i smoked and it just all of a sudden hit me yeah. um, i have a really fast metabolism okay. so like drugs react weird with me like anytime i was at like the doctor they're like man you really have a fast metabolism like you metabolize things really really quickly um so like when we take hallucinogens i'm always the first one to start before everybody else i'm like is anybody else seeing this <laughs> no yeah um Sorry, I forget where I was going with that. So I started thinking about all those no, first, crazy events. Yeah, no, first, but yeah, first um, time smoking. Where'd then, you get it from? What's his name? What's his date of birth? Yeah, where did he no. live? <laughs> uh, couldn't even I'm tell just you. Kidding. <laughs> um, but yeah, I was just like blown away by like, because I had drank too. And I was like, this is way better. Like, Why did you? Why did you? You can continue to communicate. I yeah. don't know if you know this, but I've been high this entire conversation. Oh my God. Sean, yeah. No um you know you it's it's just like you know for some people it's like having a beer it's just like yeah. relaxing a little bit just kind of so what uh going back to the moment though what made you decide to try it like i said just being like a rebellious kid okay. my friends were doing it it was like why not we were in a safe environment we were across yeah. the street so it was just nothing home. really could go wrong you know who knows but yes, yeah. I always, I was also thinking about those commercials. Like, this is your brain. This like, is your brain on drugs. Yeah, I was like, well, they just came up with dumb ideas. Like, they're not like jumping into the pool that's empty. It's like, well, why would my pool be empty? Yeah, yeah, it's true. Well, you drain it, drain it and clean it, I suppose. But fair. Yeah, I just I don't know. I don't know what the future is with with everything. Like, where does it stop? Right, like recreational cocaine, recreational right? like meth, yeah, like like hey, we're gonna bring the coke <laughs> back to cocaine. Um, yeah, like, where is the? I line? mean, everyone, everyone's on Adderall these days, man. I don't know what country it is, but I know they've like legalized all drugs. I forget Portugal, something like that. Yeah, uh, and Portugal it's just has. like they're uh, they're backtracking caught. from that though. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, they're having. You don't want people like shooting up in a public park. That's kind of. Well, they have they have like safe places and stuff like that, but it's it's not it's not working out in the best way. And a part of it again, it's it's like set and setting, man. Like you have people. So when you smoke pot, if you well at this point in your life, being normal or off, like, and this isn't an insult to you, it's probably just based on how much you smoke, right? But like being sober is an experience in itself because of the time that you spend high. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's like normalized switched when you're, when the way I always view like alcohol and everything, and this is just me, I'm just super introspective about like how things affect me. Um, I always decide like, why am I, and my father dealt with addiction and stuff like addiction runs in my family. So I'm like, I can combat addiction. I've never been addicted to anything except caffeine. Mm -hmm. But I can combat it if I think about it hard enough, right? So, like, why am I drinking right now? Am I drinking to socialize? Am I drinking to enjoy this? Or am I drinking to get away from a problem, right? I found that I was doing all of them. Sometimes okay. I was drinking with friends. Sometimes I was doing it just to, like, socialize. Yeah. But then it turned into drinking alone by yourself a lot. To run and away then from it's problems. Like, yeah. That, honestly, sometimes alcohol created. Yeah. You know, it's like, oh, I'm drinking more alcohol is what created this yeah and i'm and this is not a this is not a hate on marijuana because i my my <clears throat> father who lives in new york and it's legal in new york uh will smoke from smoke weed from time to time and um in doing that he he's been sober from alcohol for 
15 years now because he his again decision making and everything on alcohol is terrible we just expanded um, to new york so oh did you yeah okay new york and new mexico <laughs> right so. on man um but he he you know it, it it's been revolutionary for him in getting away from that substance because i think alcohol is a lot more destructive in my opinion personally but, i agree from what I hear of people who smoke pot is it's like, oh, well, it helps my anxiety, right? For the most part, for all, for the friends that I know, like they're like, I'm anxious, this takes the edge off and things like that. My, my inquisition would be, are you still focusing on treating that anxiety? Like that anxiety is telling you something to a certain level, right? Like, oh, I'm, except impending doom anxiety, like, Oh, there's there's fifty three thousand one hundred and forty seven asteroids flying past the Earth right now, and one of them might hit me. Right, right. like what that's, it, whatever Trump's doing to instigate yeah, something. Exactly. Yeah, like that type of anxiety, probably yeah. not usable. But there is an anxiety right. where it's like, oh, I'm feeling anxious. I haven't done my laundry in a long time. I should probably do my laundry. And that anxiety pushes you to do something you probably should be doing. Right. Fair. So it's. I just smoke a joint and do my laundry. Right. Well, at this point, you do, yeah. right? But I, I'm saying for for some people, I feel like they turn to that substance in lieu of being introspective of like, okay, why am I feeling this way? Am I going to use it right now to not do stuff? Or am I going to use it to get rid of this this overwhelming anxiety that I feel towards this and then go do the laundry, Fair. right? For me personally, I know exactly what it's covering up. I have a lot of trauma in my life. I've lost a lot of loved ones. Mm -hmm. I've had really, really bad experiences in my life. And that has really, I don't want to say I fell back on drugs because mm -hmm. I never like got arrested for it or gotten like deep trouble. But like, let me tell you, if you're having a, you know, if your dad passes away, uh, smoking a joint just by yourself, just kind of thinking about him is a really nice moment. And it kind of gives it closure. Yeah. So like, I wasn't like, oh, I immediately just ran to like shooting up. It's like, yeah, no, yeah. I, I smoked a joint. I thought about all the things he taught me. And, you know, like I was very, in, you know, introspective thinking about that. So yeah, I think it's helped multiple times in my life. And that's why I was really happy to start working with it and am happy to work with it to this day. Yeah. Um, and that's awesome to hear, man, because it's like for me, uh, a lot. Of, I So trauma, trauma gets uh sectioned off in brains differently right and Fair. for me i i could not deal with my i wanted to process my trauma um i had the opposite effect so a lot of people feel depressed when things go on in their life something happens they feel sad and they're down i had the opposite effect where uh i was dealing with a lot of traumatic events and i couldn't feel sad anymore like I wasn't sad. I wasn't, I never felt a negative emotion. I was just happy all the time, which people are like, that's what I aspire to be. And I'm like, dude, I'm telling you, you start losing your mind because no, you're yeah. like, all I want to do is cry right now. And I can't freaking cry. Yeah. And it's like, am it's I, like, you start looking you're like, am I a psych, like a psychopath? Yeah. You need a good balance. It's kind of crazy. Yeah. Like you need the good and the bad, the yin yep. and the yang for sure. But like yeah. you don't appreciate the good without the bad. Yeah. Like if things are just good all the time, that's what, you know, it's like, oh, this yeah. is nice. But like, I think it's a, a nice mix. But yeah, like I've, I've been there as well. Like just yeah. kind of like numb to everything yeah. and like, I don't really care. But I think yeah. cannabis also made me like, you know, a little bit more compassionate calm nicer more approachable i, would I was a very it. angry person like leave me alone you know walk around with my sunglasses my hat down like i don't want to talk i'm very for the uh recreational use of, of plants across the spectrum um but what i would really like to see is like wellness centers really implement uh like marijuana into their therapeutic sessions yeah you know mushrooms into the therapy sessions and and stuff like that. I, I I think that can be a really, really bright future, but ready? Hold on. Tinfoil hat coming on. Bloop. Tinfoil hat's on. I think Big Pharma doesn't want us to have it. I think Big Pharma makes way too much money off of antidepressants, keeping us sick mentally, and uh, it, it really bothers me that that is the block that we have. And the DEA is an extension arm of ensuring that 
these drugs and clinics don't open up because they want to big pharma is basically nudging them like, Hey, just so you know, this is what's going on. And they do it with hormones. They do it with peptides. It doesn't matter, man. It, it It's like the, the intermingling of the big pharma industry and the DEA and the, the, you know, law enforcement branch of the federal government is, is sickening. I mean, like, you know, for the amount of like ads I see on TV and stuff like that for, you know, pharmaceuticals. Oh, Zempic. Yeah. And, and all the uh, side effects <laughs> that yes. always gets, it goes on longer in the commercial. Yep. It's like may also yeah. cause this, 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 this. And it's like, you know, I just deal with the headaches and the gas to be fair. Yeah. Like other than having like, you know, yeah. your eye be, eyeballs may dry out and then like yeah, the slight problem. hearing loss and liver failure. It's like, you gotta be yeah. kidding me. Like the crazy thing is, I'll is just like, take a headache. <laughs> crazy thing is, is like if somebody's predisposed to like schizophrenia though, like there are those rare, rare cases where it's like it triggers, but it's, they're predisposed. Right. So it almost, I almost wish there was like, some sort of genetic testing you can take. Right. Just you know, like, like, oh, it's this. Here you go. Yeah. Like, oh, don't smoke this strand because you might go crazy. So only stick to the, it's like, oh, I'm gluten intolerant. Like, oh, I'm, uh, what is it? Sativa? Is, yeah. Indica is, and sativa. In, yeah, yeah. I'm indica intolerant. So like, I only, <laughs> you know what I mean? Things like that. It, I think that I've would heard be pretty. All kinds of crazy things about like that kind of stuff. So oh, I'm sure. But oh, it's all, right. it's all for folklore. Yeah. You know. Everything is and yeah. like, you know, there's some people, I mean, look at rock stars. There's some people like I'm surprised Ozzy Osbourne is still alive. Oh, dude. But like, you know, that guy's body was able to just process drugs and he's <laughs> still alive. So like some people's yeah. bodies are slightly different than others. Yeah. Like, you know, you just like, you know, the Spartans, like if you beat a little kid with a, a stick and a shield every day, yeah. he is going to turn into a mighty warrior. Yeah. <laughs> Very angry guy. Yeah. What's stopping? What's stopping big pharmaceutical companies from coming in and taking up the marijuana industry? I couldn't tell you. I mean, you know, everybody has money nowadays, so it's all about like this, that, like you know, people buying Twitter and buying companies out. So yeah, I guess there's no safety in anything anymore. You know, welcome to McDonald's Lube and Tire. You know, because they're just gonna start buying out Jiffy Lubes or something. You know, who yeah. knows what kind of mergers are in the future. Exxon, yeah. Mobile, McDonald's, you know, like that's so, alarming. Yeah, it's it's uh, the movie Idiocracy just kind of hits a little too close to home for me sometimes. I'm like, oh, we're headed there. Yeah. People are like, oh, their person's riz and raz ain't up enough, dude, bro. Shit's yeah. like cheap. Don't they I'm don't like, they water their shit with like, with my? I don't dude? know what people are saying nowadays, like little young kids, and I'm like, here it is. Yeah, it's no Idiocracy cap, right here. Yeah, like. They're just little stupid statements that I can't understand. Are they talking like SMGs, LOL, giggles? Yeah. You know what cracks me up? The stupid ass hairstyle that they have right now. What is that? Where it's like, uh, it's tapered on the side and like permed on the top and curly and stuff. You know, I, it just, dude, it drives me nuts. Is it worse than go, Flock of Seagulls? Do you remember that haircut no. from like a uh, wedding singer? It's like a huge flare up. And like uh, a mullet in the back, it's it's quite intense. But that's like the worst haircut I've ever seen in my life. That's a statement, though. Yeah, this but that's like '80s like rock band yeah. type shit. Like the thing that bothers me about this haircut is it's there's too many of them. Like I go to the gym at eight o'clock and work out, and I walk in there, and it's like high schooler galore, and it's like they're all just standing there, just it's all, all of like them. that scruffy college. Like I don't give a. No, it's I not even like hippy shit, dippy, like, bro. No? It's it's like it's well kept, but it's it's well kept and it annoys me. Yeah. So See, that's in, what bothers me. In my day it was all just <laughs> scruffy bullshit. Yeah. Well, I don't have hair. Maybe it's just me. I'm I'm just being jealous that I, I do. Grow. My mine's hidden under here. I have some. Yeah. I just wear baseball. I haven't lost caps that yet. Yeah. That's where everybody thought uh, they're like, Oh man, you have hair? I thought you were bald. I was like, hmm, no. You do wear baseball caps a lot. All the time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I love them. Yeah. Well, man, we're uh what is, what does your future look like? We'll 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 start wrapping it up with that. Um, you know, you've been working at the same company now for about four years. Yeah, four years now. So you did end up moving from a previous company to this one. Yeah, I worked for uh, Kind Love before okay. this. Uh, I have nothing but good things to say about them. They were they were awesome people. Yeah. Um, that was like you know the drying curing part of the job, um, and I just wanted to get you know my hands wet in like all the parts of the industry. So. 
I wanted to try out concentrates and diversify a little bit. Yeah, I came over to Oleo and interviewed with them and loved their product and loved what they were what they were selling and wanted to join the team and they hired me. So, but yeah, kind love. I worked for them for about four years too. Uh, right loved it there. Met a lot of great people. Did a lot of awesome things. So, what does it look like in the future? Uh, I'm gonna continue to just try to kill it for my company. You know, me personally. Yeah. Um, I really don't want to move to another company. You know, I'll work for them forever. So, is your headquarters located here in Denver? Yes, yeah, here in Denver. Okay, cool. And then we also, you know, I said we uh, expanded to New York and New Mexico. So, yeah. Um, you know, we could fly out to those locations, check out some stuff. But yeah. Well, I yeah. like you, man. I want you to stay local for sure. Yeah, you no, know what I, I mean that's why I asked. It, it like, recently uh, went recreational Ohio, and all my really? friends in Ohio were oh, like, shit. "Are you moving back?" And I was like, "Absolutely not. You could not pay me enough." No, money. I am not coming back. Yeah, I was like, I love it out here. So yeah. I just got done with a trip. Uh, literally got in this morning at uh, oh. three a.m. I've been up for a, what time is it right now? Like nine, ten. It's almost ten. Yeah, it's ten o'clock. I'm. Yeah, going going pretty, pretty strong. Good, that's, dude, yeah. that's why I'm drinking water today. Because if I drink alcohol, I'd be falling asleep on this table. Um, but I got back from New York, man, and and growing up there, it's so weird. When was the last time you probably visited Cleveland recently? Yeah, about uh, let's say maybe six months ago. Okay. Year. Did you stay? Did you ever take a long time away from it? Mm. Or do you visit like almost yearly? Yeah, about yearly. I mean, okay. every time I go back, it blows my mind at how crappy it is. Yeah, it's just so sad. Like everything, yeah. like your favorite place when you were younger, they closed. Yep, or it burned down. Yeah, um, all your friends have either moved, or the ones that still live there That's have sad. like you know families. So you can't like you know, yeah, hey, you guys want to come out and get some dinner? It's like can't. We got a newborn, or you know, yeah. um, and then you know you have friends in high school that have passed away. So it's yeah. it's kind of. I'm not a big fan of Ohio. It's no. just, it was a really rough place for me. So I wanted to get out. Yeah. Experience the world a little bit more. It's such an emotional roller coaster going back to the place you grew up. So I haven't been back to New York in over 20 years. Wow. And uh, so when I, when I flew back there, it was weird because uh, my dad, I grew up in Baldensville, New York. So right off the lock, lock, like right up the street from Lot 24. And uh, which is on the Seneca River that leads into Onondaga. Mm -hmm. um, it's part of the uh, Erie Canal. Okay. And stuff. And um, so as soon as we, we start driving, I'm like, oh, that's the old bottle shop. I know where I'm at. And it's like, it's weird that in my brain, a couple things. In my brain, everything was like further apart. So Syracuse was further away than, than Baldensville. But the drive over there was 25 minutes, 30 minutes, most. You know what I mean? As a kid, it felt forever. Fair. Yeah. Right. Now I drive up to Denver and it's like, you know, an hour <laughs> with traffic and, you know, I'm driving around and I'm, and I'm looking at like old houses that used to be nice that are now decrepit houses that were decrepit when I lived there that are now nice. And it's so weird to see like the, the, the shift, man. But yeah, I don't think I'd, I, you couldn't pay me enough to move back. No, there. I mean, everything's becoming overcrowded. Yeah. It's like the big thing out here. I know people will, for a while, we're moving out here just nonstop because of the uh, the recreational weed. Yeah. But it's like now you go to hiking trails and it's like packed. Yeah. Everything is full on the weekends. It's like this isn't fun anymore. It's not enjoyable. Yeah, you really got to get out in the middle of nowhere to experience to really... like yeah, just quiet nature yeah. and kind of enjoy it. Colorado, you can't yeah. go to the there's and you know it's kind of funny. You get into the hiking community and there's like. There's hush hush trails of yeah. like you don't tell people about this trail. Yeah, like this is a beautiful trail. It's a nice trail. It's yeah. well kept. They're just gonna come litter and yep. like leave their dog shit bags. It's yeah. crazy. Like Hanging Lake, I know that was a big yep. one that they had to shut down because people were just treating it like crap. Uh, there's another one. You said Hanging. Hanging Lake. Yeah. yeah. There's there's another one called uh, Lost Lake. Okay. And uh, that one's it's so beautiful, man. But like most people stop. There's a certain point in that hike that most people stop. So it's like you just hike to that point as fast as you can. Right. Because <laughs> most people go, they, they try to hike it, they get to a certain part, and then they stop and they turn around and they go back. Um, but if you can get past that part of like an elevation gain of like a 1,000 feet, it's like you're pretty well golden. So it's uh, I do agree with you. It's getting packed out here. Um, but it sounds – You sounds... have to be optimistic for the future. So that's what I'm always just kind of sticking to. Yeah. like. You know, as long as you are like the change you want to see in the world, yep. you know, try not to like road rage and 
you know, clean up litter when yeah. you see it and that kind of stuff. Like oh, hopefully it'll so get better. Hard. Oh, dude, it's so bad with all the homeless and stuff. Like mm-hmm. we have some homeless people living near us and they just create like a lot of trash and a lot of stress uh, on our environment. Yeah. Like, you know, we know they're going to the bathroom somewhere. Yeah. So. Oh yeah. Trust me. I'm aware. <laughs> Cause I'm on the, uh, I'm on a homeless outreach team yeah. right now. And, it's like, uh, I'd love to help, but it's like, if I gave every homeless person a dollar that asked for one, I'd be homeless too. Well, here's the thing is there is, uh, there is zero reason why people, I, I will say this. The housing list is very long. It takes forever to get somebody a house for free, for free. There is zero reason if you have somebody who doesn't have mental health and substance abuse, there is zero reason why they are homeless. Absolutely zero. And that's not that's not the pull yourself up from your bootstraps, son. There's a job right around the corner. Yeah. That's not saying that. That's saying like there are so many there are so many programs that will help people either get off of substances or get mental health that the people who don't have substance abuse or mental health, bro, I'm telling you, uh, cause things happen. They, they file bankruptcy, you know, they move out here and they just, they thought they could afford an apartment. They can't, they're, now they're stuck. Yep. Um, like that shit happens, but it, you know, it, we, we contact them and, and then we find out their story. And, and most of the time, uh, the people that are motivated, not on drugs, not having mental health issues, within like a month at the most, they're into some program, if not that week. And it's it's not it's not pretty. It's like it it's a program that's set up on a on a build you up system mm-hmm. where it's like, hey, we'll give you shelter, food, um, but you're going to, you know, shovel shovel the snow. And then once we once we see that you're reliable and you can work we'll, we'll move you into, uh, like a, a, a day program where it's like, we, like you tell us what you're good at. We'll line you up with a couple day jobs and stuff like that, that we can build back your resume, show that you're reliable and then build it up from there. But yeah, I agree with you. Um, I think I, I, I truly believe with this, like psilocybin is the next wave. Um, I hope the standard of the marijuana industry kind of holds its hand. And I, I kind of hope that some companies that are already established like your own, and this isn't trying to push you guys to yeah, do anything, yeah. but like well-established companies that know how to file stuff because part of, part of the issue with the marijuana stuff is in the beginning, everything had to be cash and it might still that be that way, but like the, the banks won't cover you or anything like that. Yeah. I remember and then, a lot of different yeah, stuff. And yeah. And then it's like, So to have a company that's well established with working with a scheduled drug in the eyes of the federal government produce that and then be able to uh, provide a product that, you know, is not laced with fentanyl or anything else. Yeah. You know, the last thing I want is somebody who's looking for like a like a psychedelic experience because of their depression. (laughs) Right. To overdose. Yeah. You know what I mean? Or a guy who's just trying to relax and smoke a joint and some others. Exactly. Like why? Yeah. Why are you putting fentanyl in there? Oh, so they buy my product again. It's like, I'm not looking for that kind of bus, dude. I'm I trying know, to just smoke yeah. a joint. It's nuts, man. Yeah. It's so, nuts. Uh, but hopefully, like, all good things, you know. Yeah. I want to see uh, my company and myself succeed. Yeah. Um, and just, you know, try to just be a better person in this world. And well, I think that helps. Sean, you are truly an awesome person. You as well. I, I've enjoyed uh, knowing you and your friendship so yeah, far. Yeah, man. So I far. Can, uh, you know, I mean, <laughs> yeah. There's always time for change. Yeah, I don't. I don't know yeah. if I want to see you behind me with them lights on. Nah, dude, <laughs> that life is behind me. All I do is give people resources nowadays. Fair, fair. But no, man, I, I and I mean it, man. It's like you, Griffin's a great person. Chris is a great person, and like great people attract other great people, and nice people, and caring people, and it's like, it's it's so beautiful to see this community come together out here because mm-hmm. you don't have family. No. Yeah, as I say, they're all. Uh, my sister lives in Indiana. Yeah. So, and it's like, uh, you know, Griffin doesn't really have family out here, or he doesn't have family out here. Chrissy doesn't have family out here, so we kind of all like come together. And, but that that shit follows through with like business too. Yeah. Like people like hanging around nice people. Mm-hmm. And it's like it, I've been called a dickhead. I'm kind of an asshole, a little bit. We'll have to do. I'll have to yeah. do that field trip. Fair and see. Yeah, I was gonna say <laughs> walking you know, around like, shut up. You know, years keep ago, trimming. I, yeah, I used to be a little bit of a hard ass. I'm sure there's many people that uh, that can attest to that. Yeah. But you know, I've learned to calm down over the years. Like, but you know, 
some people were definitely in the wrong and I called them out on it. So, yeah. you know, we've had all kinds of crazy stories. I'm going to make a robot that cuts, that trims. You know, they have like electric scissors, but no, like, I'm talking like a full autonomous robot holds it up in front of a camera, analyzes it and cuts the trim off. And oh yeah. Boop. That'll be nice and cheap. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, but it'll I take know, jobs away. Yeah. Usually uh, there's just a tumble trimmer. Like it's a big cylinder that has holes. And you just throw oh, a bunch of weed in it. No, no, not really. Okay. Yeah. Some, no, this, some people this... use it, but it tumble trims it, but you only do that with really shitty product. Yeah. So and you guys don't have that. No, no, no. All right. One more time. Oleo. Oleo. Yeah. Cause we're producing oil. O I L. And then oh, that's, that's like seven ten, like that's uh, like four twenty. Everybody smokes weed. Yeah. Now seven ten is like the oil, like the concentrate holiday. So, Why seven ten? Because it's O I L, oil. Seven one zero. So if you flip it upside zero. down, it's oil. It's one of those like, oh, little play on word type things. Yeah, yeah. The palindrome. Dude, like that went over. Gun. That went well over my head. That you can tell I've been it's up like seven, since one, three a.m. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, I'm like, like what are you talking about? Down. Like seven one zero. Yeah. yeah, no, it does make oil. Yeah, right on, man. Well, shout out to Olio. Um, awesome if you, company. If you, yeah. From what you say, man. Shout out to this podcast. A lot of fun. It's there. That's your camera. Right over by my. Uh, oh, what was his name? I don't know what I called him. What do you go by? Nick. He's our he's our producer guy. Nice. Yeah. He's the imaginary guy that I have in this studio to make it look bigger than what it is. All right, everybody. Sean, Olio. If you smoke marijuana, give him a shot. Um, I appreciate you guys. Take care, man. Have a great night. Bye. Thank you.